Okay, I think we're live. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another Etcher Studio Live demo. I just confirmed we are live. If you can see us and hear us, we have 73 people watching right now. Just type in the chat, John is awesome, because that's the intro <laughs> we need right now. <laughs> so uh, I'm Anya, I'm with Etcher, and today we have the own and the own and only John Harrison. Before I pass the mic and the screen on to John, I just want to quickly let you know, if you have any questions, feel free to type the word QUESTION in all caps, followed by normally type your question, because I will be keeping an eye on the chat to grab your questions to feed John. Every question that is that pertains to his current work, whatever he's doing, I'll ask as soon as possible. Everything else I'll say for the end for a short Q&A. Uh, we do these free online demos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and we're planning on doing some more. So feel free to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications to stay up to date and be alerted when we go live. And the next, uh, the next live demo we have is tomorrow, the 16th, with Lauren Farley. So that's going to be fun. We have a bunch of demos. Um, I'm going to put in the chat a link to a quick survey that we have so you can give us your honest feedback. It's a completely anonymous survey. It takes like one minute, just like three dots to just tack, tack, tack to let us know what you think of today's demo so we can hopefully keep on improving them for you. And that's it. I've talked enough. Please, John, uh, take it away. Let me highlight your workspace. Yeah, marvelous. Yeah. We all, are we good to go then? Yeah, we are. We have a bunch of John is awesome in the chat. I'm so happy. Really? Yeah, okay. A bunch of people who really don't know me that well. So there you go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, this is the weirdest thing. I'm actually <laughs> doing a demonstration to, um, to a phone. Um, and it's, it's bizarre. But anyway, I'm really glad you've all taken time out to join us live. Um, so what I'll do... And look, you can see a, a quick a quick snapshot of the kind of work I do, in, in case you're not that familiar. Um, and I, I, I kind of, I do line drawings, really, in ink. And then I add colour um, in varying degrees. And the piece I'm going to be doing today is one that I chose that was one of my most liked posts on Instagram um, this year, this last year, 2021. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing that, um, but I'll, I'll just quickly flick through because I just happen to have, um, sketch. I work a lot in sketchbooks. These are A5 watercolour books. And look, this is the kind of thing I do. Let me see if I can find one. There you go. All my work starts out like this. A line drawing, but done directly in, in ink. And the tools I use are these, um, you're probably familiar with these. I either use these Pigma Micron pens or uh, more often than not, Unipin Fine Lines. The thing they all have, there are other brands, lots of other brands, but the thing they all have in common for the way I, I do drawing um, and coloring is that they've all got waterproof ink in because if, if you have a pen with, um, oh, Sorry, I'm just looking. I haven't looked at this book for a while. Sorry, I'm just I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> um, if you if you do a nice drawing in 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 ink in in water soluble ink, and then you put a wash over the top, it all bleeds, you know. And, and if you're looking for nice fresh watercolors, and you've got ink bleeding into it, it's not it's not that good a um, a result really. So um, my style, if I've got a style, is is that it's um, a strong line drawing done directly in ink mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll choose to add some colour to various parts of it and generally and this is a I did a podcast for somebody uh, the other week and the question was how do I decide where to leave white space in, in, in the piece of artwork the drawing and the answer is more often than not I don't know until I've actually started the drawing and then it will occur to me it's an instinct 
Um, I won't use artistic pompous speak like the drawing speaks to me or it's my response. I just kind of wait for something to, to suggest itself. But generally, let me flick through and see if I can find one. Generally, it's something like that, where generally it's the man-made things that I leave unpainted and, and keep the colours for, for the natural landscape. Like that one. That was done... Um, well, that was one I did for a YouTube demo last year sometime, last summer, in the first, first lockdown. And as you can see, all the man-made stuff, apart from the roofs, but I couldn't not paint these lovely slate roofs. That's a farm in Troutbeck in the English Lake District. Um, and although these, these stones have got some fantastic colours and textures in them, I felt that... And, and the point of the demonstration today is to use colour to focus for me to suggest to focus your eye on, on, on part, of the, um, part of the image. And if mm -hmm. I'd put colour on there, your eye wouldn't, it wouldn't know where to look at that or look in there. So this is a kind of a lead in. Um, there's lots of, like that one, look. Bit of colour on the roofs, but the buildings are generally, and, and it's a nice, nice lead in. Um, oh, look, handily, these, this swatch in the, I must have known I was going to do this. Look, this was last June. <laughs> and I think somebody must have said, what were the colours you used? So there you go, look, cobalt blue, I'm going to be using that. Yellow ochre, um, sap green, some uh, undersea green, which is a really dark green. I should say all of these, these um, pigment names are all for, from Daniel Smith's uh, range. Uh, that was cadmium red, but really washed out for the roofs. I'm not be using that today because in today's um, subject, there's no, no, no built structure. And the ultramarine violet, which I use for shadows. Um, so yeah, that, see, there's another one I did. All this, all this lovely perspective. Again, all the, all the man-made structures, no color on them except for the shadows, which is another little kind of trick the other way the other thing i can do um and I'm, I'm about to film a youtube demo on my channel um to demonstrate how i get these colors in the in the stonework that's an old barn in the um in the yorkshire dales so i'll be i'll be doing that so before we get get stuck in i should just mention for my demonstration today i've got this lovely the materials, first of all, I'm using these lovely brushes from Etcher. I'll, I'll be using these three mainly, but the, this fantastic set in its own little thing, own little roll, look, got some great, I can see that, sorry, that one mm -hmm. will be fantastic for, um, I need to talk to this camera and not that one there. Oh, if you want to, that, I can switch so you can, we can switch. No, to no, 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 okay. Anya, that's, that's. That's absolutely fine. I can see these okay. square ones would be fantastic for, for painting brickwork and stonework. Um, but for, the for today, the colour is going to be mainly landscapes. I'll be using these three. These are a size 10, an 8, 10 and a 12. And I generally don't use anything smaller than a, an 8 or a 10. Um, so... I, 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 and the hallmark of a good brush is that you can get the, you, even if it's a big brush, like a squirrel mop, which I, I do tend to use if I'm doing bigger pieces, um, like this one, a squirrel mop, that actually, when it's wet, you can still do really fine, fine work because it, it, it narrows to a really good point. But on the size I'm working today, um, these brushes are absolutely perfect. And the colours again in my, this is a lovely, these are from Etcher, this lovely stackable in its own tin. Um, and those are the colours, there's cobalt blue, sap green, green gold, which I don't think I listed, yellow ochre. And these are all greys or indigo. Uh, and there's a very, very dark sap green there. That's a new one. So I thought I'd slip that one in and see what it looks like. And that's uh, quinacridone gold, one of my favourite colours really makes a, a painting pop. And in terms of um, the, the paper, let me, let me just move this quickly. I'll put that there. 
move the advertising. Uh, the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford, and it's 300 gram with a rough finish because, oddly enough, I've just been doing some commissions this week, um, and I tried what, because there were line drawings, I tried to use some coat pressed paper, and it, the drawing was fine, but when I came, came to add the colour to it, the coat press just did not work. It didn't do what I expected it to do. And what I like to do, this is um, this is about to be framed. The rough paper gives you these lovely. I don't know if you can see them on the on the screen. These lovely broken patches. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll see when I come onto the sky. My my technique, my process with the sky is to do it in one pass. Don't go back in and try and prod watercolor around. You'll never make it do, and it will end up one brush stroke and leave it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if if there are broken bits, I just leave them and then pretend I meant to paint clouds that were there anyway. So mm -hmm. that's the thing. So yeah, that's why I like to use the rough, um, the rough finished paper. It, it adds some real character. And this is my latest piece that I've literally just finished this morning. Oh, um, I'm quite pleased with that one. It's kind of a, a looming sky, and that that was a cobalt blue sky, and there's some lovely granulation happened. See what I love about watercolor is these. You've probably read this thing about happy accidents, but they really are fantastic. And I think the only thing about happy accidents, and you try if you try and force them, it'll never happen. Uh, but with experience, you can put yourself in that situation where it's more than likely to happen. Like that was meant to be a much harder edge than that, but I love the way there's almost a suggestion of rain clouds there. But if you'd said to me, John, paint a, a looming sky with some rain clouds, it would have looked a complete and utter, wouldn't have looked as good as that. And I'm quite pleased with that. I'm sad to see it go when I take it to the gallery. Um, but there you go. That's, that's, my, that's my technique. That's my process to leave the man-made stuff like this dry stone wall and the buildings and even though these these rocks and stuff in the screen sorry i should say where this is this is a village called thwaite and it's in swaledale in the northern yorkshire dales fabulous and the gallery that it's going to is just around the corner there in a village called muka m-u-k-e-r beautiful shall we get started oh, yeah i'm gonna get yeah people start to panic if i haven't actually drawn anything after 10 minutes. Oh, no, um, no, you're great. But don't worry. Um, one of my home, I've speed. I work People really- already I, signed up for your workshop and I haven't shared the link yet, so. Oh, well, that's good. Um, <laughs> Thank right. you so much. So there is, that's, that's the sheet of paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet, uh, which is 15 inches by 11. Now I could no more start to draw on there um, with, with no border on so what i do and this is the only time you'll see me use a pencil is to use a handy mount and just give myself a really quick excuse me and it's an a4 an a4 size um area and that's the only time you'll see me use this pencil now let me just remind you of the this is the that's the scene that I'm going to do. Um, it's a lovely scene. It's a wintry scene, but I'm not going to try and emulate snow. Um, I'm just going to give a sense of the of the um, of the view, really, in my, and, and, and use my technique to to um, just put some colour in. It certainly won't be fully coloured in. Um, let's have a look. Are we okay there? Are we still all right? Yes, you can see that, can't you? That's the that's the extreme right. I, I should probably move the the camera across just slightly. There you go. Sorry, you can tell I'm a novice at all this. Um, so let's get oh, you're started. Doing great. Camera placement is great. Your art is gorgeous. We're all just very thrilled to see this. So you're doing great. <laughs> And Anya, how's the light? Because I know we had some issues with, with the light in the test. So I think far, that's... so good. If, if something's off while you draw and we notice something, we'll make sure to let you know. Thank you, John. Thank you. Right. 
So, blank piece of paper, the most terrifying thing an artist can can um, be faced with. And those of you who are paying attention will have noticed, look, this is a portrait orientation, and yet I'm going to work landscape because I think it, it, it kind of works well, and we know the sky up there. And what I'm going to do is to start there, and you can't see... And just now, that's the line along the top of that hedge that's going to go right there and down and along. And I'm holding this pen. I'm not sure if you can tell. I'm holding it really loosely. I'm not gripping it as though you're writing a, a letter or anything like that. Um, and I'm going to come down there with that. And one of the reasons I hold this, this, the pen loosely is that this rough, this rough paper, as I, if I hold it, um, if I hold the pen lightly and it skips over and it misses lines, it misses bits in the line. So you get a really nice characterful line. You don't get a nice, that looks as though you've ruled it with a, a technical pen. And let me put in, um, before we go any further, this this nice vertical, this um, it's a telegraph pole, I think, and it, it's the reference sketch came um, came from one of my Instagram pals, a chap called David Sketches. I'm horrified to say I can't remember what his full name is, um, but he posted this sketch. So I asked him for permission, and he's very kind to let me let me use it for today's demonstration. There you go. The reference so, image. Okay. I'll put the link in the chat again. And could you tell us the size of that pen, please? This pen that I'm using. A, this is a really, really fine one. Look, it's a 0 0.05. Really okay. fine. Now the lines may not be showing up. That they are well. really clear. I can we can see it really well. Excellent. Because when I'm doing when I'm doing actual demos in front of an audience, my camera suddenly sometimes doesn't pick up the really fine lines, so I have to go up a couple of sizes, which is good for visibility, but it's not that good for showing how I like to like to start. Right, so then we'll bring out the horizon along there. And come along there. I'll be coming back to this and I'll, I'll be using, there you go, and there's another telegraph pole down there, look. And instantly you get a sense of, mm. it's really, this is really a fantastic exercise in one point perspective. Um, but just adding that, that there and, and the way it's going off, it, it really does, really helps. Mm. Um, right, and then across here, Somewhere across here is it's a lovely winter tree, so it's the worst thing. I think I'll ask David if he can give me one uh, a view in in spring or summer when it's covered in leaves, and you don't have to contend with all this, all these um, these branches. I'll only put kind of the the basic outline is because what I'll what I'll do here is um, just get the basics in. I'll go up, we'll put the line along there, and there's another one down there. Because then well, I'm going to put the the sky wash on fairly soon because it's a fairly big area. And it'll take a while to dry because. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the UK, and even though it's spring, it's still it's still quite fresh. Um, so it's is, is stuff's not going to dry. Sorry, sorry, I was sorry, just Anya. wondering if, if the lag. Is there any particular reason why you're using such a fine pen at the beginning? Yeah, because you can always add weight to your lines, but you can't take them out. Mm -hmm. So. And if I'd started, and it's all about um, dynamics, 
you know, it's just like music. I mean, we were chatting about this. There's so mm. many parallels between art and music, you know, in, in, in the technicalities. But in music, if everything was one level, you switch off. There's no interest. Um, and I kind of like to think that that can be, the parallel can be drawn. There's some, so I'm just drawing there some, um, a stand of trees. I don't know what they are um, in the distance. Um, so you start with, you vary your line weight. So if, if everything was this, this uh, fine spidery line, it wouldn't look as interesting, but I, as you'll see when I when I um, when I crack on and we get to the the detailing bit near the end, or as I often call it, the fiddling bit, where you're looking for more stuff to do. Um, you see all of these fantastic exercises. Sorry, I've gone off. Mm -mm. So the variation of line you get very very fine and you get some heavy ones and it gives you that lovely contrast and the a sense of dynamics um and if i just demonstrate here down this side there's a telegraph pole in the distance both sides are the same but if you if you then just and i'm holding the pen a bit more firmly mm. you do that and you suddenly start to get a sense and the light's coming from this direction you start to get a sense of some kind of shape and, and, and volume. And let's put that around there. Right. Let me... Um, wow. I'm just going to pop the, pop the sky in now. And this is, this is pure cobalt blue. Um, and there's not... I'm going to... I want a fairly, a fairly cool wash um so here we go let's have a look so let's just let's just do this and the only place i'm going to be careful is around these tree the tree trunk so i'll do this first look i'll go in there put the rest of it i literally and i'm not painting a full sky and I don't know if you can tell, look, I'm using the side of the brush there to give some lovely broken cloud effects mm -hmm. uh, and the sky. And we'll come up there to leave that white. And then this side. There you go. I always think in demonstrations, there's always this gap where the artist kind of is doing something off screen. Um, and I always think it must be frustrating for, for people who are viewing that you don't know what's going on. So I think that's about as much sky as I'm going to put in. I think if I put any more sky in there, I'm in danger of then doing a fully colored um, piece and that's not my intention. It's not what people like to see. Okay. And there's me fiddling. So can you see all this lovely broken? Not sure if I, mm -hmm. if I tip it. Yeah. Yeah. Put that back. Because the, the, I think there's a bit of glare from the, um, from the wetness of the wash. A little bit, but right. it's not too much. And I also no. noticed you did not use a lot of pigment. So I'm assuming no. that's on purpose too. Yeah, it was. Um, if if I wanted to, I don't know. See the reference thing. The reference photograph is definitely a wintry, pale sky. So I think to give that mood without getting into the technicalities of, of painting um, snow, which I keep having a go at and never succeed. Um, if you use pale colours, that by definition, that's going to give that kind of a that seasonal feel. Right. So let's mix some sap green. Sap green is the sorry, I lied there. Rewind, delete that comment. This is not sap green. This is a colour called green gold, and it's the lightest lightest colour. And 
And I should all, uh, also, I don't know if I pointed out that working from a reference photograph, it's fine, but you should never ever, unless that's what you want to do, you should never ever aim to get an exact replica where everything's in a, the exact place. Because if, if that's what you want, you just frame the photograph. What this is an exercise in in me drawing my my kind of um, where are we? Sorry, this is my take on the on the scene. Mm -hmm. um, so I put things in, or I leave things out, and um, it's my version of of this lovely country lane. So let's. I'm staying away from that sky because I don't want the. I've just picked up some of the darker. This is the undersea green. And it's now then what happened there was so I need to just colouring that in. Although I'll I'll keep my eye on that because I want that. This stand of trees I'm working on there needs to be almost black by the time I've finished. Um and some along there. And these hedges that come away from this, this viewpoint are kind of wintry hedges. So they're not they're not green by any shape mm -hmm. of anybody's imagination. So that's where I'm gonna put this lovely another brush. My lovely etcher brush is there. So some green oh. this colour, when I discovered this colour, this uh, quinacridone gold. It's just, I'll just show you it now, look. Here we go. It's just such a fantastic colour. And I'm just going to bring it out about there. And while that's wet, I'll get some of the green because I want to kind of blend in some greens into there. And this... This I'm putting on now is very nearly neat pigment. There you go. The sky is nearly green, nearly, nearly dry now. So I can put that in. And if you drop neat pigment into a, a slightly damp or slightly wet wash, you get some fantastic effects. But I can't, you can't predict them. I can't make them happen. Mm -hmm. So these are the accidents this is what this is what i love about watercolor um right that's that one done so let's come along this side now and i've just seen you see the thing about going back to music you know you improvise mm -hmm. when you see something i've just seen that the sky has bled sorry the the green has bled into the sky there just very slightly because the sky was a bit a bit damp but you know what when that's dry i'll just put some pen work on it and pretend it's another tree oh. and pretend pretend i meant to do it all along no one will um, know that's the beautiful thing well they will now because it's it's committed to the internet so <laughs> well on a normal in a normal case oh yeah and I mean, this is slightly different because um, you've all got access to the reference photograph, so you can refer to it. And you can say, "Oh, that's in the wrong place," or "This is in the the wrong place." Um, but normally, people are just looking at your drawing, your sketch, and admiring it on its own merits. They're not comparing it square mm -hmm. inch by square inch with. Okay. Uh, and I'm glad that you did not get the color you wanted. So now we can all learn from you how to quote unquote fix it when accidents like those happen. Oh yeah. It's all about, well, for me anyway, it's all about thinking on the, on the go. Now, thinking on the go and it's improvisation and it's also me uh, making it up as I go along. You mentioned about, five, can you see what's happened now to those lines? Mm -hmm. The 0 0.05. Although these watercolours will kind of 
they will dry um, and they'll they'll soften but um, the lines will be lost so you know those really fine lines have gone and that's where once this is dried um, I will there we go right I'm mixing off screen sorry while I'm talking um, uh, this is Payne's Grey and it's a blue shade of Payne's Grey. I know there's, I've got an entire um, set of half pans. I think there are 14 in the set and every one is a different Payne's Grey with a different shade. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I often come across at the art clubs I go to, um, oh, we, we, we've been told we can't use Payne's Grey, which I think is ridiculous. You know, why shouldn't you use, you know, it's it's a fantastic ready-made shadow colour and you can use it as the base for your own shadow colour by adding reds or oranges to warm it and, and blues to, cool. which is what I'm doing here. I want a nice bluey shadow along there. Let me just see. Yeah, that's that's working. Um, if I may, right. I just want to bring up your workshop. The link has been shared, but I haven't explained what it is yet. If you'd like to learn more from John, he's hosting a live workshop. Uh, it's in Zoom and it's around five or six US dollars. Uh, if you cannot make it, no worries. It's recorded. You can get the recording later and you'll be supporting John. So if you'd like to learn more from him, if you'd like to get together and paint a scene together, please consider joining this workshop link in the chat. Thank you. See how long have we been going there? Half an hour. And exactly. To my mind, I really, I really now should be. Um, ah, there you go. That's the color I wanted. Sorry, I've used a color there that I didn't list. Unless, or did I list ultramarine violet? Uh, no. No, I we didn't. Right. Had add that to the list. I've, I've just picked up some ultramarine violet because I now want to Absolutely. start. This is Payne's Grey with ultramarine violet on. In fact, let me get some more violet because it's not, not as strong. That's better. Right, I'm going to bring the shadow because the light's coming from there so the shadow would kind of go across this track and end there and let's bring this Okay. And in the far distance, behind that tree, let me use the, the pen to point it. Behind there, there's kind of a, there's a copse of, of, of trees. So what I'm going to do is use about the same, same ultraviolet with some Payne's Grey in and just, just put the shape in with the hope that that's going to dry sufficiently for me to put some pen lines in. Right, and I can see now that's really dry, so I'm going back to the undersea green. I really want to put some, some dark in there. There you go. Some in there. And we'll let it, there you go, let it, what size is this? Oh, six, I picked up another one. A lovely etchy brush, these are fantastic. Oh, thanks so much. They are really Made nice. a lot of love. Yeah. So we'll make that dark there. And by making something dark, you kind of throw off. I need this, I need all this to dry. So what I'm gonna do is pick up a heavier pen now uh, this is a 0 0.1 and see if I can 
strengthen the, the top line of this, this hedge. Now, pens behave funnily. They behave differently on paper with no pens underneath than they do. I'm not sure if you can see that there, where it's encountered the, the damp watercolour, the incline is really, really spreading. So um, that's good. So you should, you know, if you're doing this and you're impatient like me and you want to get crack on with the thing, um, you always use a pen lighter than you, you normally would. So I'm just indicating some more lines here because that, that's just unexplained white space. And I'll put some, some lines in there to indicate uh, grass. I don't and mean this... to interrupt, but I just need to add uh, at this moment of the workshop. And I feel badly, bad for interrupting because your voice is so soothing. Everyone's saying so in the mm. chat. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that we do offer workshops for companies or schools. So if anyone is interested, please just email us at hello at etrastudio.com. Tell your local art stores about us if you like our products so we can hopefully stock your stores. And please feel free to whitelist our email at hello at etrastudio.com to ensure you receive all the information about these workshops and live demos so you don't miss anything. And I'll share the link to John's mini workshop as well. If you haven't heard yet, it's around a six US dollar workshop. You can get the recording if you, even if you can't come. You'll be supporting John and you'll be painting alongside him and hearing more of his lovely voice. And wow. that is it. And yeah, out. <laughs> Please continue. I have never in my long life heard my voice described as lovely. <laughs> Seriously. So I'm just taking the advantage there. Yeah, there you go. I'm just adding some, some more line work on that. I really want that to dry, but I can, I can tell um, it's really, really wet. So let me see if I can get the horizon looking a bit. And I'm going to pick up an even thicker pen. This is a 0.3. Um, I'm staying away from there because I've got some wet paint. This is a 0 0.3 and look, and I'm pressing fairly hard because I don't want to go. There you go. Right now then, let's get these in. These are the um, kind of, I'm not sure what they call these, kind of the step things that Chaps who work on telephone poles, they kind of climb up them. The ladders only go so far. Um, and I'll strengthen that line as well. And even though I'm leaving it unpainted, I think to give some, there you go, to give some kind of it looks flat, but it's actually a round pole. So this is this is Payne's grey. I'm just going to run it down. Down there. And then the old trick, I'm just softening that edge with a damp brush to give a sense of the shape. There you go. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Sorry, I shouldn't say that, should I? I'm not pleased no, with you it. shouldn't. Beautiful. No. Please continue. Um, right. How's this? Because what I want to do. Yeah. Now I won't do the same thing on that because it's too far away and you wouldn't see all the all the detail in the distance that you would that you do with that one. So let's go back to this is the bit I like. Look. I just bring up the the wires. I'll take one off there there's one coming in there and then there's one from there to about there and then I think further down the road I think there's another one I've put one in and it just gives a uh, a sense of 
not movement, but it gives a sense of, of direction and the way it's all moving away. Um, and I actually think, no, no, it's, what I'll do is add this line work, which is kind of, I should know what kind of hedge this is, probably a hawthorn hedge, but it's been shaved flat along the top. Um, but all the stalks, the stems, um, give it some, we'll go in there. There you go. Now, I've left that tree white, but I actually think it would have a lot more impact. And it's in silhouette, so I think I need to. Right, that's a 0.1. Let me get the, I'm going back to the 0.3. Placing my little finger there where there's nothing wet. And I'm, what I'm going to do is, oh, wrong one. 0.3. Just, that's dry, I can rest there. And use a hatching technique just to get some some shape and some solidity into the the branches and there I think that works better so I'll do the same on this thing there Just want to make sure to relate to you. The chat is very positive and everyone is learning so much from you. For example, Wendy just said, this is so different to what I would do, but I can't wait to try it. I'm learning so much. Wow. Who'd have thought that, you know, little old bloke from Yorkshire drawing away. I would never have thought this. Beautiful. So soothing. Yeah, but all I, all I say is please, please, please don't refer back to the the reference thing. Do you know what? Because it's nothing like it. But um, there. And I'll, um, yeah. I've done something wrong there, but I'm not going to tell anybody what it is because... It's only me knows. No, I, I, I actually can tell you. I may as well. I may as well fess up. Look, right in the court, right in the where this lane kind of bends round there, where my pen is there. There's a spot of light where the sun's shining through. It's it's where there's a gap in the hedge, and I really meant to leave that without any shadowing, and that's a real yeah. It's a shame about that. So. Look, if I, if I bring this, if you've not, you can see there's like a lighter area there. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the, the shadow breaking through. But um, I forgot about that in the excitement. So, and do you know what? I think in terms of what I set out to demonstrate, I think I've demonstrated it. Um, I can fiddle now for another three hours and wow. possibly ruin, ruin the the whole effect. Um, you see, I'm really tempted to put um, a wash over those trees, but I think I might, I'm confusing myself with somebody who can actually paint. Um, and there aren't any actual leaves on, although at this time of year in the, when I was up in the park this morning, the buds are starting to really come through. So I think I'll leave leave these trees as they are, and I'm going to leave that tiny white uncolored bit there. And you can pretend that's the sun coming through that I meant to show there. So uh, there we are. And I actually think, Anya, I think mm -hmm. if I carry on much longer with this, there's a, a real danger of overworking. Oh, that is a very interesting point. So how do you know when to stop? Well, I don't. Wow. I, but I've done enough of these to know that uh, the, the rule of thumb is, you know, when, when you look at a painting and think, oh, what else can I do? As soon as you start asking yourself, 
what else can I do to this? That's a good sign that you really shouldn't do any more. Wow. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking, yeah, okay. This is by yeah. far the best answer I ever gotten to this question. Really? Yeah. I should copyright that then. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Tweet it, copyright it, make a documentary series about this. Yeah, because <laughs> most artists never know when to stop, but you always know when you've done too much. It's, mm -hmm. that, that's one of the things I've really found. Yeah, definitely fiddling now. So look, I'm going to stop there. And um, okay. Well, actually, no, I know what I plan to do. At the moment, these lines don't really mean anything. It's just like um, converging lines going to the difference. But there is um, there is a difference in that it's kind of a, a road there underneath. So what I'm going to do using this is a, yeah, the number six, really fine. Lovely fine points on these, these brushes. I'll confess now to everybody that's watching. Um, this is the first time I've actually used these brushes. Oh, wow. And um, some people might think that's foolhardy to use something rather than reach for your, you know, your, your usual, your comfort blanket, the, the equipment that you normally use. But, and I think it's a, a good sign of how of how good they are that I've not had any problems. It's um, but I'm really impressed. This this particular small one, some of the finer ones from other manufacturers who I won't mention, some of the finer ones just don't. You know, when you get down to like fours and sixes, they just haven't got the um, I don't know strength, stability. You know, this is holding up really well. Nothing split. Look at that. That point's fantastic. I should definitely use these again. Are I'm you using Payne's on... Gray for that road? This is this is Payne's Gray. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can get... Oh, yeah. You see, I can get them to do this as well. That lovely broken, the dry brush thing. Wow. Yeah. And I think... Let me put just a bit more, a bit more there. So it's a bit darker, something along there. And that, yeah, definitely. But I think that actually works now because you've got the change in, in tone. Because I think, I think this must've been when some snow fell and their tracks from vehicles, from farm vehicles. And there was like a, a thing of snow in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. So there you go. Yeah. Wow. Would you well, like to answer some of the questions we got from the chat? Absolutely. Yeah. Fire away. Yeah. Let's dive in. Scroll down to my questions. And I, if I did not grab your question, feel free to put it again, but I think I grabbed every question. So Pamela asks, do you usually work plein air or in studio from photos? Um, both and for the last year obviously um, mm. when in the UK we've been kind of locked down and could only go for about four months last year and for the last four months you couldn't really go out anywhere other than your own back garden um, and for a lot of the, the stuff I showed you in the sketchbooks um, let me just this is all. These have all been done. This is my, my newest sketchbook that I've I've done. Mm -hmm. A collection of drawings. Look, and these were all done wow. from from photographs. Um, so I did. Oh look, there's another version of Thwaite. Wow, different version again. Um, so yeah, these were mainly done from photographs. But there's for me, there's nothing like going out because with a photograph, you can't move your head three inches and get. a see what's around that you know around the corner you, you've got the photograph and that's it so um yeah plein air where, where i can 
and if the weather's okay, because I am a fair weather sketcher. Um, and but obviously, when I run demonstrations and workshops, we work from photographs because it's impractical to get 15, 20, 30 people outside and all in the same viewpoint. There's oh, a whole discussion about about using photographs uh, as reference, which uh, I've joined in on some discussions on some internet forums and uh, had to stop because some people get a bit holier than now about photographs. But, you know, again, mm -hmm. this last year has proved the point. You can't go out, so what can you do? Work from photographs. There you go. Problem solved. Another question from Kathy. She was asking if you could clarify the paper choice, the rough press. Yeah, this paper is Saunders Waterford. Um, it's 300 gram, about 140 pounds, and it's a rough finish. And the reason I use these sketchbooks, these are made by a company um, called Sea White and Brighton. These ones, the paper in these is virtually the same. It's not sold as Waterford, but there's a rough, oh, there's a dry stone wall. There's a rough finish on this. So I get roughly the same, the same effects um, from the watercolour mm -hmm. in, in the sketchbook. So it's, it's the rough finish, which I find is fantastic for doing these dry brush, um, these broken edges. Wonderful. Hannah yeah. is asking if you usually carry a sketchbook alongside you everywhere. Um, yes, I've got, I can't, I can't reach it now. I've got, I've just got a new one to go. Look, this is, this is a pocket size one. And it's the same paper just made in, and that re it's really handy size. It goes in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Um, and I usually have one in the car. So, um, yeah, it's good for when I worked um, and I had a commute, half hour commute on the train. I used to draw on the train rather than just sit and like look at your phone or stuff. And, and, and that's a really good, it's a useful discipline to get into, to draw five, 10 minutes every single day. It's the, um, it's the best way, you know, practice mm -hmm. it, is the best to thing to do just want to let everyone know that we also have a six sketchbooks cold press link is in the chat just in case you want to give it a go even though john did not use our paper okay next question phil asks if the gallery in mooker is open at the moment <laughs> yeah it is they opened um this past monday the 14th and then i i happen to know because i've just had an email from richard and polly that they're open seven days a week now, right through till October. Wow. Nicola so, is asking, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. Good? No, carry on. Okay. Nicola is asking, how long does John usually take for each phase of a painting? Example, 10 minutes drawing, 30 minutes painting, 10 minutes touch up, assuming that your painting is the same size as this one. Normally, uh, it's a good question. And normally, for something of this size, there would be an awful lot more drawing than painting. Um, let me just grab one of these. Here's another one. There. Wow. This is in Swaledale. Mook is just around the corner there, as it happens. Um, and the drawing element of that was an awful lot more. I think there was about 45 minutes drawing. 15 minutes for the, um, for the paint and then another 10 minutes adding this uh, wall detail on top of the uh, on top of the paint so yeah it's mainly drawing but before that if you're outside you need to spend a good 10 or 15 minutes looking before you even make a mark anywhere because it's it's looking at stuff oh, and that's this is a good demonstration of the broken broken brush on the on this lovely rough paper sorry it's beautiful it's beautiful uh, one last question before we go and i share just a couple more links with everyone mark asks uh thoughts on wet on dry versus wet on wet for the sky 
Um, I always, I always work wet on dry because you can't affect, you can't get these effects if you if you pre wet the paper or there's another wash. But I will work wet in wet or wet on wet for sky if, for instance, um, there's a, a really spectacular sky and I want to get some gradation on it. But if it's a single pass like that, I will always work wet on dry. Plus, it dries a lot quicker and you can get back in with your pen much, much quicker. I would say 90% of the time I work wet on dry. Thank you. Okay, and this is it. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for watching. I cannot take my eyes off the work because you're adding some pebbles and it's magical. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you, thank you really for coming and watching and for the kind words. The chat was so, so sweet today. So thank you for your, for your beautiful energy. I'm posting one last link on the chat for our feedback survey. Again, it takes only one minute three questions and it means the world to us if you could let us know your thoughts you just have to select to rate us from one to five it's really quick please let us know and I'm also sharing the link to our mini workshop it's on April 29th with John it's a great way for you to support the artist and a great way for you to learn more about John's workflow so Hope to see you in the workshop. Hope to see you around. We will be back tomorrow with another live demo. Thank you everyone so much. And uh, we will see you next time.